Mmm, it's an orange juice. What's up everyone, this is OJ. The Dark Goblin offers a unique function but is easily countered by the Log and many other cards for a positive trade. He could potentially pave the way for Log Bait decks. I saved three giant, a magical, challenge, and a tournament chest, and I bought the pack in the shop. It's important to note that if you open a really large chest and you haven't unlocked the card yet, the chest will only contain a maximum of one Dark Goblin. Opening my first giant chest, nothing. Diving into my second chest, still nothing. Finally, with my third giant chest, I received 30 Dark Goblins. My tournament chest had no goblins. Going to my second largest chest, the crown chest had 18. That's not bad and I'll take it. And then my grand challenge chest contained 21. Still not enough for level 7. I get the jungle arena pack and it has 49 dark goblins and the princess. Now I have way more than enough to get this little guy to level 7. With the chest out of the way, let's jump into a match where I faced Woody while he was streaming on Twitch. I'm playing a fast hog cycle deck with skeletons and ice spirits and Woody is playing a really popular balloon freeze deck. Starting off the match, I want to gamble with a frontal hog placement. It kind of pays off because he placed an ice golem in the back. He counters my hog with a cannon plant, but my hog still manages to get through because of the ice spirit. Because of that, he has to use the dark goblin. It doesn't provide too much damage, but it's enough to stop my hog from getting that second swing on his tower. I used the log to kill his dark goblin. It also knocks back his ice golem. This messed up the timing of his balloon, ruining that balloon combo. Since it's now in the front, it's pretty easy to get my Dark Goblin and Mega Minion to lock onto the balloon first. I don't have Zap, so I have to use my Ice Golem to take out the Skeleton Army. It slowed down his Ice Golem, so it's Frost Nova couldn't even touch my tower. Alone, the Mega Minion would have died to the tower, so I wanted to make it more threatening. That single Ice Spirit suddenly made my Mega Minion really deadly. This forces him to counter with an Ice Golem. Applying a bit more pressure, I played a Hog forcing his cannon out. It's not quite enough so my hog does get one swing on the tower. I thought he was going to support his ice golem with something so I used the dark goblin to take it out ASAP. But I wasn't counting his elixir so I didn't know that he didn't have anything. Woody knows he can't afford the chip damage so he cancels out my dark goblin with his. I played skeletons then ice spear because I wanted to cycle back to my hog. After playing my hog, I support him with a long distance dark goblin, but it locked onto his ice golem. This allows his cannon and minions to take out my hog, but at least my dark goblin took out his ice golem. Knowing his skeleton army and ice golem are out of rotation, I played elite barbarians at the bridge. He successfully defends my elite barbarians with a dark goblin freeze combo, cycles back to his ice golem, and no elite barbarians touch his tower. I was a bit hesitant to play the log, so his Dark Goblin did do quite a bit of damage to my barbs. Now I know his entire deck is a balloon freeze, so I have to make a conscious effort to space out my Dark Goblin and Mega Minion when taking out his balloon. Knowing he used that defensive freeze, I know I'm at a bit of an elixir advantage, so I can afford an Ice Golem Hog combo. This is where the Dark Goblin shines. Playing him right at the river, he's able to immediately support the push. And with a Dark Goblin having the fastest load time in the game, he locks onto the new target incredibly fast, taking on his Dark Goblin and minions since my Golem iced them. Even with a sliver of health, he's still going to get two shots off. Knowing his only ground unit is Skeleton Army, I played Elite Barbarians with the intention to play Prediction Log. Woody defends with an Ice Golem, followed by a 4-3 cannon placement. This lets my Elite Barbarian get one hit on the tower. I actually knew I was true red, so I had to do a classic pig push to bypass his cannon. He countered with minions and I immediately regret not using the Ice Spirit to pig push. The Ice Spirit dealt enough damage to the minions that it allowed the Dark Goblin to one shot the minions. It takes out the cannon, but it doesn't make it to the tower since it's so fragile. Now I have to deal with this balloon. He played the freeze a bit low, just barely missing my Mega Minion. And my poorly placed Dark Goblin dies to the bomb, so I defend his minions with skeletons. Our rotations are reset, so I'm going in again. I push with an Ice Golem Hog combo, followed by a Prediction Dark Goblin to take out his cannon. I placed my Mega Minion directly in the path of the balloon. This slows it down a bit because it has to float around that minion. Then I played the Ice Spirit a bit wide, anticipating the freeze. Then immediately counterattack with a Hog and Dark Goblin. Again I tried to predict his skeleton army with the log, but I only clipped a few skeletons. At this point, I just need to cycle back to my log. Woody played this match while streaming, so he's a bit distracted. He usually streams new content the day of or before release. If you want to check him out, the link is in the description below. Let's check out what could have gone better. 
Right at this moment, Woody should have placed the Dark Goblin near his King Tower. This would have kept it out of range of my log. Additionally, he should have played minions on top of my hog instead of on the Dark Goblin as that wasn't the immediate threat. As for myself, since I logged his Ice Golem forward, I could have positioned it a bit more to the right to avoid the Death Bomb damage. I even mentioned that in my last video. Moving on to the second match, I'm playing against Mana using my favorite Bowler Graveyard deck. I took out Electro Wizard for Dark Goblin, so it's a bit weaker to Lava Hound, so I added Arrows in place of Zap. Starting off the match, the only thing we knew about each other's deck is that I'm carrying a Dark Goblin. Mana banks his elixir with a tombstone, so I'm thinking it could be a giant graveyard or lava hound kind of deck. I played a dark goblin in the back since it's so fast, it'll catch up to the mega minion. With a lava hound in the back, I need to force him to spend elixir defending. Playing the graveyard, he has to use skeleton army. Then after I take it out, he plays the mega minion. All my units managed to pop his lava hound. They all clump up, and that is a value fireball. I didn't want to risk pulling with an Ice Golem in case he played other units behind them. My intuition was right, because he deployed the balloon around the same time my fireball killed all of his units. My Mega Minion doesn't completely shut down the balloon, but wanting to take advantage of this, I played my Ice Golem a bit early to tank for the Mega Minion. I wanted to go in with a bit more push, so I deployed my Dark Goblin. Looking back, I should have played him a bit more right since that could have ended really badly if he used the fireball. He ends up having to play minions to take out my Dark Goblin and zap to stop my Mega Minion. Overall, 8 for 8 elixir, so I'm still carrying over my elixir advantage from the previous exchange. My bowler doesn't really offer too much value other than tanking since mana is using an all air deck. He goes in with a lava hound in the back, but it's not double elixir so I pressure with graveyard. He actually knew I had prediction arrows so he staggered his skeleton army, but the range of the arrows is so massive that it killed most of the skeletons anyways. So my unsupported graveyard deals a fair amount of damage. Now he has to deal with my bowler. The dark goblin offers overall a bit less damage per second compared to archers, but that's not relevant because he actually has a higher base damage. Archers will kill pups in 3 shots, whereas the dark goblins kill pups in 2 shots and Nana knows this. So he fireballs my dark goblin. I wanted to conserve my elixir for a really big push, so I held off on the fireball. The ice golem did a very good job at preventing most of the damage from the pups. I have enough elixir for prediction arrows, and there's nothing he can do about it because the skeleton army and minions will die to it. I could have backed it up with fireball if he went all in as well. At this point, I just need to defend for 30 seconds. I quick dropped my ice golem and then my mega minion. I was hoping the minion would attack the balloon but the tombstone was closer. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. The dark goblin has the fastest load time in the game. This means he can switch units incredibly fast. As soon as the lava hound popped it, switched to the balloon. Paired with arrows, it was enough to completely shut down that entire attack. I don't normally play graveyard so aggressively, but I don't have any heavy counters to a lava loom combo, so I needed to force him to constantly defend and break his combos. The dark goblin doesn't deal much damage per attack, but he attacks really fast. He serves as an excellent defensive or offensive card, but it's hard to build a push with him since his move speed is so fast. Let's hop into the second replay where I'm using a zap bait deck and mana is using the log bait deck. Starting off with the best strategy in the game, Mana rushes me with Elite Barbarians of the Bridge. This actually worked because I didn't have Skeleton Army in my hand. Now I don't have the Log on hand, so he plays as Princess at the front. She manages to get 3 shots off of my tower since I didn't have any proper counters anymore. He has the Log and Dark Goblin. He decides to use the Dark Goblin. For one extra elixir, it can deal chip damage to my tower. Despite it being only one shot away from dying, it lands 2 hits on the tower, dealing a bit more damage than the Log would've. It's incredibly annoying chip damage that's hard to prevent for positive trades. He's gonna chip me out at this rate, so I absolutely can't ignore the miner. But I'm really struggling because he can just use the ice golem. Now he has zap for my goblin barrel and the log for my mirrored barrel. After all that, he plants a dark goblin. It takes out that wave of fire spirits and it crushes my furnace safely across the river. But on the bright side, I could log it for a positive elixir trade. Wrong, now I don't have the log. He knows his princess is safe, she manages to land 2 hits on my tower. Conserving his log for my goblin barrel, he used an ice golem to tank my princess while his dark goblin takes her out. It's coming in and I only have minion whore to answer it, otherwise it would have dealt 400 damage to my tower. At this point he's low on elixir and I manage to deal quite a bit of damage to his tower. He plays a princess, gets a hit off of my tower, then I play the log and it takes her out for a positive trade. 
Not letting any fire spirits pass, he plants elite barbarians. Unfortunately, it was the same time I was deploying my princess, so I decide I need to protect her by swarming my skeletons around her. He defends everything with a well-placed ice golem. It takes out the skeleton army, an entire wave of fire spirits, and soaks the princess's shot. Then he counters my princess and minion horde with both dark goblin and princess. Notice how he staggered them just far enough that I had to choose one to log. Mana played elite barbarians at the bridge to protect his princess from my fire spirits. Cleared the path of the log, and that is good game. Overall, to take care of my skeleton army and minion horde, he had ice golem, princess, zap, log, minions, and dark goblins. Plus, he had that dark goblin sniping my furnace safely from his side of the map. I could have played better, but I think this replay did an excellent job demonstrating that dark goblin can be a potential log bait for the princess, and it functions both defensively against swarm cards and against a princess, as well as offensively for constant chip damage. In this last match, Mana is playing a giant graveyard deck, and I'm playing a frozen hog deck with dark goblins. He plays a tombstone in the front to bank elixir. I'm running a low cost cycle deck so this is a perfect chance for me to snipe the tombstone all the way across the river. I don't know what his deck is yet, but I know he has no building to pull my hog rider now. He wasn't expecting that because he played a giant at the same time that I played my hog, so he has to counter with the mega minion. I didn't really need to fireball and that might be trouble, because even though I'm leading by one elixir, he has a giant on the map, so he's technically leading with a huge advantage now. With only one elite barbarian turning around to defend against that graveyard, it takes down my tower. He was a bit delayed with the tombstone plant and that single elite barbarian slices down my tower for a thousand points. Then with my second barbarian jogging towards that tombstone, I played my dark goblin right at the river to take out all of those skeletons. He almost got a slice off of the tower, but the bowler is planted right in front. Meanwhile, the Dark Goblin is just going to rapid fire on him, and he's already at less than half health. Knowing his tombstone is out of rotation, and that his bowler is on the left side, I go on with a single hog on the right side. The reason I did this is because now my hog is guaranteed damage on his exposed tower, and he has to spend elixir to defend my hog leaving him a bit short of casting Graveyard on the left side with his bowler. Because of this, now I am able to cancel his bowler with an Ice Golem and a Mega Minion with an Ice Spear, both for positive trades. With our rotations reset, he goes in for another Giant push, but I'm not worried because I have Elite Barbarians to dice away at his Giant. Meanwhile, applying pressure on the right side with my Hog, he counters my Hog with a Tombstone, so I zapped the spawn Skeletons but that doesn't do anything because his archers were locked onto my hog as well. So that was a really, really bad trade on the right lane for me. Now I need to focus on taking care of the left lane and my main concern is not letting that bowler get through to tank for his graveyard. Lucky for me, he deployed a mega minion, so that kind of makes up for my bad play on the right side. I deployed my dark goblin in case he wanted to take advantage of those two dying units tanking for his graveyard. He had a bad fireball that missed most of my troops. The Dark Goblin cleans up all of the skeletons, clearing the field protecting the hog. It gets one hit off of the tower. With his bowler slowly approaching, I know he's going in for a graveyard finale. He's waiting for the bowler to be within range of the tower before casting the graveyard so I can tank for it. Knowing that, I wanted to place my Ice Golem, but I accidentally placed an Ice Spear, but that's okay because it delays him from crossing the bridge, and my tower locks onto the graveyard instead. Paired with my Dark Goblin, that graveyard does almost no damage. The Goblin survives everything and just absolutely shreds the tower. Three darts is the equivalent of one Barbarian Strike, so that little guy packs quite a bit of chip damage. Combining this video with my last video, I hope you are able to gain some understanding of what the Dark Goblin can and can't do. Here's a failed attempt at Apprentice and Carol trying to mass goblins. The giants just melt away like butter, and with the goblins' fast load time, they're so efficient at locking onto skeletons. I think if Karo used that free spell a little bit earlier, Apprentice could have squeezed in more dark goblins. Their total number is 32. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more quality OJ.